So, a good sporting weekend, at least for myself. Uh, I'm going to just speak for myself. We're still waiting for Aditya to come through. That's why we, we're just running a little bit late, guys. And he apologizes for, for being a little bit late. Obviously, we know about India's loss. and So, bear with Aditya, please. And also, be respectful to him as well. Because it's not nice to lose and to see your team lose, etc. And, and the manner that he lost... Um, <laughs> I went through a similar feeling last weekend with when Manchester United and and the Proteas lost um, the week before that. So it, it's not something that that is easy to take. Um, so so be respectful of him when he does come onto the show. We are waiting for a couple of more guests that are to, to come over here onto the show. I saw a comment that, saying that I'm always late. Bro, um, I don't know how long you've been a subscriber, but. Uh, we've done over a thousand videos or over 500 live streams and I've been late maybe twice so I don't know if you want to use that as the general rule but thanks for the for the message anyway for, for joining us in the live chat uh, this is this show I thought we, we must talk about um, it, it's something that came up yesterday when myself and Aditya had quite a long debate about this, Justin. Um, and we spoke about Timba Bavuma and there are, were opposing views all day. I mean, I'm going to read some comments out on Facebook um, ab about Bavuma and, and one of the pieces that we, we, we wrote. And basically, we just put up a, a, the piece to, to see what, what the fans' reactions would be. Um, yeah, the, the post reached over 16,000 people and it, I was quite surprised that it, I, I wasn't surprised that it would and we needed to talk about it because it's got 354 comments, this particular post. And all it was, was the headline saying, does Bavuma's performance against Sri Lanka deserve praise? Now, I can't read every single one of them. I'm going to go ahead and copy this right now. And I'm going to post it in the live chat for you guys to have a look, to see at the opposing views that people might have. So a lot of people will have different views on different things, and it, it will be quite diverse. I think some people are in certain players' corners, other people aren't. So it can be quite tricky to, to discuss this from a unbiased point of view. Um, and to not favor certain players that you have. So I'm going to post this in the in the, in the the link right now, the link right now in the live chat for you guys to go ahead and check it out. Um, go ahead and look at what some of the comments have been saying. Surprisingly, actually, I, I thought I was alone. Um, on yesterday's show, it felt a little bit like I was alone, although there were some guys like Mark Wayne, of course, that were, and, and some other guys in the live chat as well that, that, that backed me up on my sentiments because... The situation was quite difficult for for Temba in the circumstances. Um, I don't believe that his entire innings deserves praise one hundred percent. Like I think it's for me, it's it's ninety percent praise for me because I think underneath the in the circumstances that he had to play um, with players falling around him, Temba's role for me has always been in the side to to bat deep. Make sure that the runs are ticking over so that he can support the batsmen on the other or the batters on the other end that are going to fire. We saw Kane Williamson do this today, even though they were chasing a total of 110. We saw him just go at the runner ball, take it easy, and allow the batter on the other end to take the massive strike. So we've got our first guest here with us. Abai, welcome. Um, I'm just giving a little bit of an intro over here. So I think that there needs to be some. Can, so I'm just going to mute your mic uh, about this, like a fuzziness coming through. Um, so I think from Vavuma, I think when he does something well, then he needs praise. And when he does poorly, he needs criticism. And every player should be treated that way. And I never saw any criticism go Quentin de Cox's way, Rassi's way, even Aiden's way. I know Aiden's been playing excellently. And Aiden's my favorite player in the, in the side, actually, to be honest. And um, and I know I shouldn't have favourites, but I, he has he's been someone that I've been following for a very long time. My fan hat is on at the moment because this is Cricket Fanatics magazine. And remember that all of our opinions are our own and not the views of this channel. But 
criticism should go their way. Criticism should go Dwayne's way when with regards to the bat, not with the ball. So overall, I think that his majority of his innings deserves praise. I think that if he didn't score that 46 or 46 balls, South Africa's out of the tournament. That's where that's why I was giving him praise about it. Because ultimately, David Miller had to do his job, and that is finish off the innings. So I just want to get your guys' view, and I want to get everybody's view on this. And whoever calls in onto the show, please call in on the show. The link is in the description. Um, I will post the link again if you guys didn't see it, but it is in the description of this video as well. So just go to the description and click on the link. Um, it is in the live chat as well. Um, so very simple, guys. All you have to do is have an internet connection, whether you're on mobile, whether you're on lap a laptop, you don't need a fancy mic. Just click on the click on the link in the description and come have your say. I want to hear what you guys have to say. The show is all about you. So let me just read some of the, the links before I get to you guys. Let me just read some of the comments that I did find. I'm just going random here. Lorenzo Bailey said, many people have a serious lack of cr cricket knowledge. Our boys were two down in the power play, first six overs. In cricket, you can only play what's in front of you. Temba played the situation awesomely. Uh, one person said emphatically, yes. Another person said, he has the ability, but we want to see consistency, especially when someone makes an impact. He should have been given more opportunities sooner, just like Amla, who wasn't thought of as a T20 player in the beginning. Then another comment said, yes, because one had to bat like that. He knew that he he would have some great hitting power down the end like Miller Rabada, and they did exactly what he was expecting. Well done, guys. Someone said he was exceptional during the Cox mini protest. He will await him at the airport. He needs to explain to us fans, not the media, the Ballers boy. I don't agree with that one. I think I think Quinton the Cox came out with a statement that I think was very fair. Under the circumstances, yes. And I agree with that comment. So my comment is on the global, on the overall scheme of things, if you look at that and you didn't watch the game and you see that on a score sheet in a T20 match against Sri Lanka, you wouldn't say that that was a good innings from that perspective. But if you watched the game and you saw what happened and we saw what we needed in that particular match, then under the circumstances, it was a good knock. Um, I'm just trying to look for someone for some comments over here that was against us. Let's go to Twitter because I also put it out on Twitter as well. Um, a lot of people were were commenting on this particular um, on this particular stream. Let's see what someone said over here. I'm trying to look for one that's on the other opposite end that has a different view to my own. Uh, there was someone that says the uh, I feel. Um, I feel like the balance of our team is not quite right. If you look at other teams, they all have one or two explosive batsmen in their top five. Timber, Riza, Markram, and Rasi are all similar molds. They need to get in before they can become explosive. I agree with that. The thing is, though, when we're chasing a target over 160 plus against a more formidable opponent, Timber isn't going to cut it. He made a useful contribution yesterday, but we, he, we almost lost it because of the batting he was batting too slow that i don't agree with um i think that ultimately if aiden kicked on we would be in a better situation um guys i am going to let everybody have a chance to speak i'm just reading some of the comments out there until until everybody joins so just hold your horses this it's a long show um we have someone that said um People like criticizing, criticizing without an analyzing. I like your assessment here. T20 cricket is not always about hitting sixes. Um, someone said over here. Um, let's just get on it. Let me just get into it. And I think Timber is good at number three. Okay, that's something something else. I saw another negative comment here. I just can't find it right now. But okay, that's some of the comments that... Oh, here we go. No, he finished at the runner ball thanks to some great shots at the end. But his first 20-plus balls, he went at 50. Frantic running and ran out Rassi. He came in at four with the field spread, making singles easier and boundaries hard. He should have... He should be skilled enough to hit the gaps for once. So that's 
something that some of you guys might say. So let's get into this conversation. Justin, floor's yours. Talk as long as you want about this particular topic. And then afterwards, Abai, you can go straight after Justin. The floor is yours. You don't have any time cap. I'll let you speak and give your opinion. I think first is to remember is let's let's talk let's talk about Timba Pavuma, the captain first. I think no one no one is seeing the picture behind the scenes here. And I'm talking because I'm a cricket club captain myself, so I, I see the dynamics with my uh, current side. So I understand a little bit the psychology behind what's happening with Pavuma at the moment. Is what you must remember going into any ICC event, it is not easy. If it was that easy. I'm sure Sarvik would have won many more events if it was that simple. But obviously, it's, it is not. So you first got to put in account, he's got massive responsibility with the team. Which means, if he does well, he gets praise. If he doesn't do well, he gets criticism. That's, that's, part, of, that's part of the task. That's part of, being, that's part of being in the job as a captain. Now let's talk about Tim Bavuma as a captain. When you're playing, as a batsman, you can only control so much. You know your strengths and weaknesses yourself. Your teammates probably knows. You can only control the game as it happens, which means you cannot be an explosive batsman in a scenario that requires you to anchor and calm, and calm the innings down. So what I'm trying to say is, Khaled, you you need the nail in it. We were two down in the power, in the power play, which means for the, you're basically losing the game. You're behind it game so if you don't have that calmness in your team which was needed that proved to be the difference of winning losing because you had the sense of calmness and stretched the whole innings out and it ended up being beneficial so what i'm saying is in the beginning they would have had to they probably vouchers probably when selectors probably worked on a plan on saying we picked four or five anchor batsmen and we got an explosive person of a Miller. And obviously, if Pretorius comes off, he's, he can be explosive also. He obviously worked on that in a mock room. You can't count mock room out. Sorry, Khalid. Um, so you got to think, right, one, was it not a strategy? And secondly, in this game of cricket that we all understand and love, we all know, each, all four of us know, you can never, ever underestimate your opposition. Never do that. Because Sri Lanka is one of his teams... They can play brilliant cricket and they can destroy you, or it can be a team that they don't do well on the day. It's a, it's a hot and cold side. It's very much like the West Indies and Pakistan at times. Very hot and cold. So what you must understand is, obviously they would have known Sri Lanka is a threat because you're playing in turning conditions. And like you said, Khalid, you need that calmness. You need to give... Your bat, there needs to be a sense of calmness. Look at Williamson. My honest opinion, and people will probably criticize me out there. Please bear my opinion. For me, Williamson has to be one of the greatest batsmen the world's ever seen, right? Definitely the best at the moment in tests. So what you need to look at is, if he played a scenario runner ball, surely that must say something about the conditions, what it is out there, that it's not that easy what it looks like on screen. And... Sometimes it's better to play smart cricket, as in playing the conditions what's in front of you, playing the ball on its merits. Because remember, on a TV screen, it's easy to go, oh, the ball's short, the ball's full. You know, full ball, I would have driven it. A uh, short ball, I would have pulled it for six. A uh, short ball, I would have cut it like a tindoka. It's easy to see that, but then we don't know the scenario, what, is it, what it's looking like in there. I remember, I'm going to actually give a quick joke for everyone. I played a cricket match two weeks ago. And there was a situation, there was a bowler bowling onto a fourth stump channel the whole time. And the game required me to pace the innings out, right? And I tried to dab the ball to third man like a Kane Williamson. I thought I was that clever. And unfortunately, that didn't work out for me. And the reason why I'm giving that example is it looks a lot simpler on screen than what it is out there. Now, there's some excellent points that you made there. Um, and, yeah, okay, the poll is going crazy at the moment. There's 49 votes. So if there's 49 votes, that means that 
there's 49 people obviously watching this hopefully and so i want to see 50 likes on this particular video at the end of this this video please guys so come back and like it and tell all your friends and family to like it too to have your say the call link is in the live chat so you guys can have your say just please also remember that all the views on this particular channel are those of the panelists and not of Cricket Fanatics Magazine as an organization or as a company or however we want to call it in this channel. Bye. You've heard Justin. Justin had his points. I would like to get, before I get to Aditya, who obviously opposes my views here, we know already, we, we're chatting all day already on WhatsApp <laughs> about this. But I've got some, I've got some ammo, I've got some ammo today. Uh, but okay, so bye. Let's just get your views. I mean, we, you didn't get a chance to talk on the review show. Unfortunately, you're a working man now, so we don't get to see your face as much as unfortunate. But um, please give your say. What is your thoughts on it? First of all, thanks for the short notice. <laughs> hey, I put uh, it in the group earlier, really. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. But, but anyway, I think um, when it comes to like the praise criticism for for Bavuma's knock, I think it's like 85 15 for me because context matters. I think somebody had to take the responsibility and bat through after what three quick wickets fell down. And understandably, you wouldn't expect them to take unnecessary risks. But then again, the, the required run rate started to go up and something had to be done. But at the same time, in the ab absence of innings, just think about what would have happened, right? So I think. Uh, I think I think he doesn't get the appreciation he deserves for this knock. Um, but at the same time, things can be rectified when it comes to the approach because is it just me or have I been seeing a trend of a relatively more defensive outlook? That's going to change if we're, if we're going to be able to challenge and defeat top teams. Yeah, I think what we've done and what, what has happened here is... A lot of us have had, we have this preconceived idea of how T20 is supposed to play. And we're using the T20 competitions like the IPL, etc., that have been in the UAE as an example to say this is how T20 should be played. But for me personally, I feel like I've told Aditya on plenty of occasions, he's going to disagree with me again. Um, I see IPL cricket and international cricket. I, international's year and IPL's year for me. Like, I think that the level of cricket in international cricket is way higher. The amount of the, the players that are there, the intensity, the pressure that you have on you as an international player is much higher than a foreign player playing in the IPL. I can understand and I can see the point of IPL players that are from India having a lot of pressure. But this is not an exact example, but India should... Well, the favourites in my eyes for this particular tournament, I thought they're going to really run it, run, run right, especially against the teams that didn't play IPL. And a lot of the New Zealand guys, not a lot of them actually played IPL. Um, if you look at it, compared to the India team, which the entire team played IPL, and they they should have been the most prepared because they understand the conditions the best. So in my, so I'm using India as a landmark, and I use India as a landmark because I thought that they really would be. The England on the other side, you know, like the way England's dominating currently in the in Group A, I thought that India would be that in Group B. They they reached a very good Pakistan team. Pakistan doesn't play in the IPL. None of those players play in the IPL, and yet they are completely dominating in these conditions. So maybe our preconceived ideas of the way T20 cricket should be played and how fast people should bat and all of these type of things, maybe that we we've been a little bit fooled or into thinking that that way but Aditya before you give me your opinion I just want to know how much praise should Pabuba get for his particular knock because we didn't ask I didn't ask you that yesterday at the moment the poll is saying 58% are saying yes he deserves praise for his knock and 42% are saying no um, that, <laughs> um, look definitely some and uh can you hear me? By the way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, look, I think definitely some. Um, if if he's a designated anchor in the team, then uh, then yes, he did he did play that role to a certain degree. Uh, my my problem with the entire situation 
stems to a large part from the management's decision to include Reza Hendricks in the team as well. Because as I, as I said yesterday, um, as I said yesterday, you know, they needed to resist the temptation of picking an informed opener because that's over a period of time, they've used a certain template that has worked for them. And then suddenly mid tournament, you, you have a new template, a new role for everyone. Everyone gets pushed down a position. And to, I think that just disturbs the balance of the team. And Temba Bavuma is not supposed to be batting at four. He's come in without a lot of game time. He's come in with an injury. He's recovering from it. And he's got to play the toughest conditions in the game and possibly in the tournament because they're playing on a very challenging wicket. So I feel like I feel like Temba Bavuma should feel hard done by that because he should be opening the innings. But if you're talking specifically about that innings of 46 or 46, where I feel like that, where I feel like things started going wrong was that he he found his first boundary in his 29th ball, right? And by the time he got out, the run rate was close to 11, 11 and a half runs and over. So then David Miller comes in at six. And I think it's, it's unfair on David Miller to then have to start launching right from ball one, which is what that situation was like. So I think if if a player is going to be is going to be playing those many balls, then you know you have to sort of ensure that you finish the game because you're the set player. Uh, but um, so I think if this criticism that for for Bavuma's innings, it's it's that you know because by the time David Miller came in. They needed what 18 they, they had 18 balls and they had to make 31 and then 25 of 12 and then 16 of the last over and generally in these conditions you'd favor the bowling side to get over the line so the fact that david miller actually got got over the line is, is credit to him and kg of course uh, but i think if if i have to criticize bavuma's innings there it's that if you if you're playing that many balls then you have to be able to finish the game because it's difficult for the next batsman to come in and start scoring at 12 runs and over. Okay, so Mpo, we didn't get your cha chance to hear what you had to say. This is a massive talking point in South African cricket currently. If you've looked at any of our socials, um, on Twitter, on Facebook, etc., on YouTube even, there's been a hell of a lot of talk about this. Um, it was requested that we talk about this further in a longer show. So that's the reason why I'm doing this show. So... If you, um, and Paul, can you give me your thoughts? Um, answer the, the, the main question mainly because yesterday, myself and Aditya, I don't know if you watched the show yesterday, but myself and Aditya had a proper like discussion between ourselves and we disagreed on a few couple of points. I gave, I was basically defending Timber, um, in from the live chat because there was a lot of things in the live chat that was said about him. Um, where I felt he needed a little bit of praise for the performance that, that, that he put in. I didn't say necessarily that it was a flawless innings. It wasn't. Um, they, I particularly have a lot, of, a lot of criticism for the way he started the innings and how long he took to start it. Um, and, but the way he, towards the end of his innings and coming right and under the pressure that he had with people falling around him, I thought he actually did well to get that 46 or 46. But what is your thoughts on that particular innings? um it, it it was too slow um i've seen timber bat a lot quicker um i've seen him bat a lot quicker on slow wickets um and i'm not saying like the wickets in durban are are, are are similar to what's in abu dhabi but in that in that t20 challenge um timber wasn't batting at under a hundred strike rate for large parts of his innings and then accelerating at the end it's one thing that irritates me about how south africa bat it's like a team culture or it's something that's come into the team where guys are more important uh more fee feel like they want to keep wickets and wickets are more important rather than actually trying to accelerate the run rate and my biggest issue with yesterday was the pressure was put on that lower middle that that middle order and lower order too much by the way in which timber and aiden were going at, at, at the beginning when you bet when you bat like that and we've been batting like that for a while now you put so much pressure on that lower middle order to try and get the targets get close to the target especially chasing um and so for me i wasn't happy I, I look i love tempo with all my heart i'll go to war for him but even he knows that wasn't a good one 
Um, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't great. And the team will say no, the conditions and everything else. And I get that. It's it's very tough. We saw what happened to India today. We saw what happened to Australia. But for you to be able to beat the team that's doing well in this tournament, that's England, you can't be batting like that. Um, and the one reason why I think we we end well, we are batting like this is the muddled thinking from the from 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 the team management. What is it like? Why are we rewarding Riza now? Like I I I get he got the thirty three of thirty nine of thirty, but what what why are we changing things at this point in the tournament? Had my my point was had Timber probably had started in the power play, um, we would have gotten to the target a lot easier. Um, because Timber's window is not in the back end, it's in the front end. And 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 I would understand at the lines, the lines start with reason Timber comes in at three. I get that. But we've been playing with Timber opening. We 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 killed the debate that Timber was going to open. Uh, well, they told us Timber was going to open. So I don't understand when Quinny's available. All of us said, "Oh no!" But Reza's had a good. We we don't want to drop Reza. I have an issue with that from from a team management perspective. But that was no good innings from Timber. Nobody batted well the, 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 yesterday. Um, Devin Miller's the only one who can hang his head, head up because at that point in time we needed twenty five of twelve. Um, and based on that, you lose. You should be losing the game. Um, and, and, and Sri Lanka's bowlers were, were, were aren't as good. And we saw that. That's their weakness. And so we shouldn't be happy about this because the way in which this team is structuring games, it's, it's kind of like very back-end focused. And the problem is that we're a team of top-order batsmen. Why can't we attack the power play? I'd rather, and I thought about this um, in my in the preview we did on One World Sports Radio on the Sri Lanka game. I would have wanted for for for, for Aiden to open and Timber to come in at three, largely because of the fact that I wanted I, I want boundaries at the top of the order um, to kind of to kind of get that, and then in the middle overs you rotate the strike. The problem with Timber's innings yesterday was it wasn't rotating. He wasn't rotating the strike. He was yeah, stuck they started poorly. He was stuck on one end, and he couldn't. He couldn't. Work. And that's it's happening throughout the tournament. I'm really worried about it because I Timber's biggest thing is he gets the the, the, the momentum going. Look at uh, Baba. Look at um, look at um, at, at Mohammad Rizwan. That's how they beat India. They didn't. They 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 end. There was a point where they started hitting boundaries, but in between then they just rotated the strike. We're not de- we're not decreasing our dot ball percentage. It's, it's, it's actually higher than what it was before. So what, like, it, as a team, something needs to happen. You need to decide what you want to do. Because we're not a boundary-hitting team, so we need to move between the wickets. And if we can't, then that's a big issue. And and largely comes out to our ability to play spin on these tracks. These tracks are not turning a lot. They're a lot slower, but they're finding it hard to kind of turn it around the corner and run for the single. And that's where the pressure comes in. And that's why yesterday's game, guys, we're going to be eliminated. Sri Lanka, after that Dwayne Pretorius um, wicket, should have eliminated us. It was as simple as that, but they could not because their bowlers are just not that great. Um, their fast bowlers are not that great. It was that bad. Like, I'm not happy with that. I'm happy we, we won, but I'm not happy about how that one went through because we, could, we should have sealed that game over 16 had we actually work those middle overs a lot better um and 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 to some extent yeah like timber's innings held us together great fine but to me it wasn't a great innings for him it wasn't a great innings to watch in a t20 and you're lucky that you're playing a team of the quality of sri lanka this we did this against australia and we got punished for it so i don't understand why we're all why it's here it's not a good innings it's not it's not something you want. He's, he's a much more fluid player. We've seen better from him. We need to get what he... Like, the innings he played against England when he started playing T20, the innings he played uh, even last year when, when England were here, um, the innings that he played... Well, he didn't play a lot of a lot of the innings, but he, he the, what we want is, is, is for him to be that rotator. The anchor role requires you to take singles. You need to be at 100, 110 for a lot of your of your thing as an anchor. For the rest of the guys, they need to be batting a lot at a, at a higher strike rate. You even yesterday when Aiden was was going about his business, he tried to he, he always is more back end intensive. So for me, I want a little bit more in terms of him 
denying those dot balls, but because you know he has it in his locker. Um, but outside of that, you kind of need to work it through. However, if you wanna if you wanna cry, if you wanna say pitch whatever it is, and the pitch is in the UAE, you're gonna find yourself being knocked out by a team like Bangladesh when they're gonna give you three spinners because you're gonna be looking at the pitch. Rather try and look at imposing yourself on on the teams and looking for opportunities to score. The team that does that is the team that's going to win this World Cup. And England have that in abundance right now. And somehow New Zealand have some sort of uh, figured out some sort of a formula. Yeah, well, we can't be looking at England and then saying, okay, South Africa, you need to play like England. That's not going to happen. We need to look at the players we have currently. I'm not saying play like play England. Best type of cricket. I'm not saying play like <clears throat> England. But what, what England are figuring out is the ability to... to, to to, to, to decrease the amount of dot balls there, rotate the strike a lot more. I know it's hard, and I know it's, 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 it's hard to bat um, that side, but you kind of need to get yourself um, momentum in the innings, especially in the middle overs. You're not getting, those, you're not getting that momentum. You know, yeah. you can't be happy with somebody being, what is it, um, what, what was it? It was, he was striking at 85, um, was halfway through his innings, and that's not... That's not. That's not. That's not what we want. We can do. We can ask for uh, better from it, and and that's something for me. Yeah. So that's why I want to make it very clear over here that people are misunderstanding my analysis of Timba's innings. What I asked was, does he deserve praise? And the reason why I asked if he deserves some praise is because he was getting slated still even though he scored 46 or 46 balls. People were saying that it was his fault that we were in that situation. They said that he put pressure on Aiden, and that's why Aiden went out. They said that it's Temba's fault that Rassi was ran out. They said it was Temba's fault that we got into the situation where we were at in the particular match because he was batting too slow. So everything was piled on to Temba Bavuma's innings. My question was, does he deserve some praise i'm not saying and i said it again and i'm going to say it over and over and over again until you people hear me i did not say that his innings is flawless and i teacher can tell can can back me up over here because i specifically said i'm not saying that he's out that his innings was flawless he does deserve some criticism particularly for the first 20 30 balls in his innings or 20 for the first 20 balls in his innings or first 10 balls in his innings specifically he does deserve criticism for that but when you are looking at the innings within the circumstance on that particular pitch, I do think he deserves some praise. Whether it's 85%, 90%, 85%, 75%, just some praise. Not no praise at all, like what was happening on socials, what was happening in some of the live chats that we had over here. That's all I'm saying. Because nobody else around him got criticism. Gwenny didn't get criticism. For Riza didn't get criticism. Aiden didn't get criticism. Rassi didn't get criticism. But Pavuma got criticism. And that was my problem with the analysis of the game. Who's next? Anybody else want to go next? Justin, you want to go next? Uh, first, I want to just add what Khalid just said now. That goes back to what I said earlier. As a captain, unfortunately, when you're a captain, sadly, is and that's where I find the games or your fan, fans in general, people after the game, I find it so sad because when you're the captain and something goes wrong, you're immediately being crucified for what, what's gone wrong, where people not seeing the, the bigger picture because people forget cricket's a team sport, right? So it's not, it's not just one player that wins the game, you need a team in at the day, and this is where I agree with. Pooh, if I'm saying your name correctly, um, I remember in 2009, the IPL, when they came down to South Africa, uh, Deccan Chargers won it, if, I, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly. And one of the cultures in the team, and I actually, I actually from this current group, if, if we had to say this is the time for South Africa to win the T20 World Cup, let's play this game of this is our time, right? And I look at if we need to add an identity. Tekken Chargers used to put up, they used to have a goal in it in the change room. And bearing in mind, a lot of Indians for subcontinent teams, it's harder for them to play in South African conditions too. And 
one of the common goals was nothing lower than 170, 160. That was the that was like the culture they had in the team. That was like a goal they had in the dressing room. And they knew 160, 170, we could defend. They knew this is a team that's capable of getting that sort of target. So what I'm saying is we need to maybe look at ourselves as a team and say, and Bafuma as a captain, I'm saying maybe he, he needs to, if it's management, then he needs to take the hand up and, and read the scenario too. In other words, we're playing on the same pitch, right? Or very same pitch, same ground. So we need to look and say, okay, if the pitch is slow, it's turning, or it's not suiting us, then we need to turn back and say, what is, if we bat first, what is your threshold? What is, what is the, the, the score you're looking for at least? So if you're saying we need 140 realistically on these kind of pitches to keep us in the game or that puts us in the game, then you need to, then you need to play according to that. If you're saying we need to restrict the opposition for anything below 150 and we think it's chaseable for us, then you need to then your game plan needs to be around that. Because every team, whether it's England, whether it's New Zealand, whether it's India, they all would have had in the dressing room saying, this is the type of scores we should be aiming at, what we should be looking at. And these are the scores that we realistically are able to chase down, regardless of who is playing, regardless of who is the starting 11 that's playing. Because in a day as a captain, you also know your team's strengths and weaknesses. You know that team very well. You know you, you, you're more out there than the coach. You're, you're more hands-on. You're seeing um, the pitch is a bit too slow for Rossi today. Rossi is yeah, feeling uncomfortable with... Let's give a ball up here. Um, so, Boomer. Okay, Boomer, is, he's struggling for Boomer. So he needs to be able to come with a realistic plan that suit, to help suit the conditions. Because every day, cricket, if you want to win a World Cup, if you want to win an event, it's about playing the conditions. That's what separates your big teams from, from the rest. Your champion teams, the rest, is the ability to play the scenarios and the ability to play the conditions what is in front of you. Mm -hmm. I want to bring up this point because two days ago, um, West Indies played on that pitch, all big eaters. Um, and it, it wasn't so straightforward as well. So let's talk about Sharjah as a pitch to play on. Um, Aditya, do you want to give your say? Or Abai, do you, Abai, you wanted to give your say before you bounce? Um can you maybe talk about Sarja and what you've seen at Sarja and then compare it to the way, you know, maybe the way things went with South Africa and what went wrong there? Well, let's see here. I think in, in Sharjah, it's more of a spin-friendly um, surface. So I think it'll be a big test for how the Proteus can, can play spin. I know that's been an Achilles heel for a while, but I think uh, e even though it was kind of a shaky victory last game, I'd like to think that things are gradually falling in place. I think, uh, I think the captain's a good player of spin. Um, I think he'll he'll have a point to prove that uh, he can score quickly regardless of conditions starting from next game. And uh, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm I'd like to remain quietly confident. We'll be able to make the sunrise. Uh, let's see here. Going back to the to the whole criticism versus praise debate. When, when you're in charge of the side you'll be subject to, I guess, stricter scrutiny. So getting criticism, yeah, it's part and parcel of the game. But I think at, um, I think fans need to be a bit more prudent, a bit more, a bit less harsh, and appreciate the fact that um, he did what he could to keep, to keep the team in the game for as long as possible. And then as a result, um, Miller and KG were able to finish things off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that, I'm going to head out. Um, cool. Looking forward to an exciting discussion. I'll listen to it during lunch time. Take care. Before, Thanks, before Aditya speaks about Sharjah, my problem with yesterday was how do you put, how do you want to chase on a, on, on, on a worn pitch? That bothered me a lot, and that's the reason why we're having this in the first place. Um, because you know in Sharjah you have to win the toss and bat first, because it's a low scoring ground, the boundaries are very small, defending there can be a little bit tough. 
um, for you. Uh, but the, the other issue is that it's easier. It's a better of the batting condition. So I was just like, I was just baffled with, with the with the team management decision to um, to put Sri Lanka into bat. Um, yeah, uh, for me, that bothered me a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys were saying maybe that it wasn't so slow and slow. There was a bouncer from Anarik Nokia that <laughs> the stubs that just went over the stubs. So that, I don't know. There, you know, there is some. There, is, there has to be some criticism of that pitch. That pitch was a slow pitch. I looked at that pitch. I heard what the the guy said before. The analysts, real analysts, not we, not analysts, but the real analysts were saying about that pitch before. We were talking about a one forty mark, and that was looked at as the total to go. But sorry, I did you. Well, a couple of things. So one is that um, I think I, I disagree with what Abaya just said about you know Bavuma setting up the innings for Miller and 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 KG to finish. I think he didn't because it, that was a dangerous situation to be in. You know, on that pitch, if you expect a new batsman to come in and score thirty-one of eighteen and then twenty-five of twelve, you know, I think that puts the finishers in an unfair position, which is why. You you look at the you look at the context of Timber's innings where he's made forty six of forty six, but he's got an out when the run rate's at eleven. You know, and if the fact that South Africa won, that's great. You know, the fantastic it's a relief. But if South Africa didn't win, if Miller wasn't able to pull that off, then who do we then what's responsible for that? the fact that towards the middle there was just not enough acceleration and that's but the accelerators that's, didn't do anything that's a big problem Conin, Teresa, Rassi I know Rassi got run out but Aiden I, I, I do I do understand and I agree with you that Tema needs to open the batting first and because foremost the fact, because the fact of the matter is that then <laughs> then we're talking then we're talking about the fact that that Miller didn't get enough balls to accelerate because, you know, it it became tricky in the middle. So I think that's the challenge. I agree with you about about Quinny needing to fire and and Reza as well. But you know, with respect to Reza, he shouldn't have been playing yesterday. You cannot look. I I don't know what this idea is about having eleven informed batsmen, eleven informed players in the team. That doesn't that concept doesn't exist. You have to do what works for your team combination. You're never going to have eleven informed players. So sometimes if you have two or three players who are not at their best, the rest of the team carries them. Yeah. But you have to do what's best for your combination. And my, my entire problem with the situation of bringing Riza in and having Temba bat at four is that you're disturbing a template that won you the last three series. And you're doing it mid-World Cup in crunch games, which I don't think is, is necessary. You're disrupting the balance of the team. Mm. Mm. And I know, like, I, people wanted Hano Klaassen out, but, like, yesterday was probably the day that you actually needed Hano Klaassen more than, than than anything else because he his role, even though, yes, he has the... Sometimes his shots are just brain dead, uh, similar to Dwayne Pretorius. But yesterday, those were the type of... That's the type of guy you wanted in that period where Timber was just... Couldn't find the middle, couldn't find his rhythm. And I do think it's it's partly that that hand hand injury. But uh, Khalid, for me, the only people who deserve praise are Miller because he received he put those two half volleys away. Gahiso because that's six at I think we're twenty two uh, needing uh, for for sixteen balls. He deserves praise. The, the 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 bowlers deserve praise. Everyone else can just hold off. They don't they don't need anything else because. They did. They did not help the team's cause in getting them to. The, yes, it's a perfect choice. Yes, you won by one, and, and that means everyone did their roles. But nobody actually did their roles. The person who actually pulled it out, 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 out of the fire were those two at the end, Kafiso and 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 David Miller. Um, the bowlers did well to get you the one forty, which you should be winning, uh, not not necessarily on the last ball, but maybe nineteenth over. Um, but. The, the fact that David Miller was there and because we don't see that from David Miller often, that's a one in a five game where David Miller all of a sudden hits out and, and it's Miller time. We don't get Miller time all the time. So the, the, the question is in another game, if the same sort of circumstances were provided, 
We don't win that. We don't win that game nine times out of ten from that position when Timber went out. We do not win that game. And 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 for me, that's more of an that tells you about his performance and and the way this team is thinking. Nobody in the middle can because it kind of like and and this is where I have a problem with with cricketing coaches and cricketing captains. Um, how do you not want to adjust mid game? For instance. At, at over 10 and 11, and you see you're kind of behind the run rate, surely you then tell Temba to be like, hey, dude, Aiden's in. Try hit out. See if you can't get boundaries. And 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 and, and because you've got guys in the back end, you have Dwayne, you have David, you, you, you've you got guys in the back end who can who 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 can accelerate the run rate. And and it's no it's no slight on on, on, on Temba's ability. It's just the situation of there are better batsmen for this time of of or the time that you are in the game, and for me, that was that's that's missing from the approaches. Uh, right now, it's whoever's in the top six must go and must play. We must try to preserve as many wickets as possible by over fifteen, which is what happened yesterday, and that's why you got Timber hanging around over fifteen when I think he should have been out. He should have he should have probably been out or started being aggressive by then. Because if you're in, be aggressive. Especially um, it, it towards uh, from over eleven because you got guys on the back end. So for me that was it. But to answer your question, people always find a fault with Timber. Yesterday's innings wasn't his best, and yes we won, and yes you can say we needed an anchor. But to a certain extent, um, a game like that nine times out of ten we lose based on if that scorecard goes because Miller time is Miller time, guys. Miller time is a fleeting idea. It doesn't happen all the time. Because South Africa doesn't want to play David Miller higher. David Miller should be playing four. Um, and you can fight me on that. But he's not because I don't know why. Well, because of, of the top order guys we have. And for me, that's the issue. Um, we should be we should be giving Miller as many balls as possible. Because then you'll see Miller time more regularly. Right now, it's one in five. I'm glad it happened now. Next game in charges against England. I say win the toss, put them into bat, and yeah. see what they give you because you don't want to be bowled out for 90 and then have your net run rate decimated like Australia in the West Indies. Um, I the only way I think we can get through the tournament. Yeah, and hopefully England are already through by then and they play a weekend team against South Africa. <laughs> no, they won't do that. They won't do that. <laughs> it's just a joke. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We've got a caller in. Um, David, um, you can have your say, bro. Yeah, what I would like to say about Tamba is he played pretty well. But the thing is, he's supposed to be the guy who rotates the strike. So in the beginning, at, at some point of time, he was at 10 of 20 balls or something, which was not ideal. But he he did well after that. At, at a point of time, he scored 39 of 30 balls. And what I feel is he should have done that from the start. He was struggling at the beginning. But I feel his role should be that he sh he should score thirty nine of thirty regardless of whatever, and that's it. I don't even know where I was going with that. That's the analysis I've been waiting for the entire time. I didn't say it. I was waiting for someone to say it. But yeah, that's exactly right. That's what I agree with one hundred percent. Is that Timber started poorly? He started very poorly. Um, and I don't know if that's because of the pressure around him and people losing wickets around him, but he started poorly. If he doesn't start, it, I think Temba's getting into his own head at the beginning of innings. Uh, he's getting a little bit flustered by everything around him. He needs to this self get his, get his chakra centered and just focus on being able to perform just at the run of ball, get the things moving, rotate the strike twos ones there needs to be that synergy between them because there was frantic running there between him and Rossi it could have been like five runouts already in that particular time so thanks a lot David for coming on the show and giving you say he just disappeared now I couldn't even say thank you team but he, he summed it up perfectly and I think we that's a nice way to end the stream um that's exactly what I feel was the case like I said I agree with you and Paul your analysis was spot on Aditya, I agree with you. Your analysis was spot on. Justin, I agree with you. Your analysis is spot on. Every single thing that you guys have said is true. My only qualm over here, my only problem was the amount of criticism that he was getting. That was my only problem when everybody else was scotch-free and Bavuma was just getting 
all the criticism. And that was my concern about it. And I don't want to sit here every single team and defend Timber because I don't want to defend Timber every time. It's not my job to do so. I only, I'm only going to call it unfair criticism. I just want people to be a little bit more equal in their analysis and criticism of certain players. And we know, and Paul knows, because we work in the media industry, we see it every single day of our bloody lives, the amount of hate that he gets on platforms across South Africa, it's sometimes disgusting. Or majority of the times, it's disgusting. So I just want to put it out there. But guys, thanks a lot for being so excellent coming to the show. I want to see 50 likes on this video, please, guys. I saw that the poll, let's see where the, the poll ended up. Um, now she gave us an update earlier on. Uh, I just want to see quickly again uh, how the poll ended up. Poll ended up. It's currently 51% to 49% out of 71 votes. There's 71 votes here, guys. Please smash the like button. I want to see 71 likes on this video after this video is done. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to please subscribe to Cricket Fanatics magazine. It's 100% free. The link is on the screen over there. And But if you want to know and get an easy access to it, go to the description. Click on that and subscribe. It's 100% free. Smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button. Click that notification bell for all future videos. And we'll see you again tomorrow with another preview show. We're going to be previewing the next game. And Paul, I hope that you are ready for that. If you are available for that, please. Um, I would really love you to be on the show over there. Justin, if you're available too. Aditya, you know, he's always there. So thanks a lot for everybody for tuning in. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow for a preview show. Take care, everybody, and enjoy your week. And I hope it's excellent and you have an amazing week and you get all the success that you all deserve. Thanks a lot for the support. Take care. Peace.